My Ryzen 7 1700 is finally here and I decided to do this video not only for my huge subscriber base but also to kind of quantify for myself if the upgrade from my old i5 3570K was worth it. Now if you don't care about the testing methodology you can jump right ahead about one minute to get directly to the results. I conducted my testings on St. Quentin's Scar because after playing Battlefield 1 for a while, this map stood out to me with the most frame drops. To make the comparison as fair as possible, I've made multiple restrictions. First of all, I only played in the area between D, B and E, infantry only and no fog visible. Second of all, I've played 10 minutes with each configuration consisting of 5 2 minute runs and each run was only a lifetime, which means that I didn't count the spawn screen where frame rates are generally higher. Moving on, on the top right you can see more details about my testing methodology. And on the top left, since Relive was turned on while testing, you can actually see the gameplay of my benchmark runs. So let me preface this with, yes, I know what a GPU limit is, but the point of this video is not to compare the average frame rate, but the 1% lows. Because in my opinion, this is the more important metric. Getting the most out of my 3570K at 4.6 GHz, I get an average frame rate of over 100, which is nice. But look at the 1% lows, it's at 65. And with my 144 Hz monitor, this is a, actually a big problem because if the frame rate fluctuates from 110 to 65 or 70, this uh, really doesn't make a smooth uh, gaming experience. And this is actually the reason why I decided uh, back when Battlefield 1 came out that I wanted to upgrade uh, to a new CPU. Looking at the 3570K with the stock boost clock of 3.6 GHz, you can clearly see that every time the frame rate drops, the GPU usage goes down from 100%, while the CPU cores are all at 100%, making it a CPU bottleneck. In comparison, the Ryzen 7 1700 at the stock boost clock of 3.2 GHz really has no problem keeping the GPU at 100%. And that's the reason why even if we overclock it to 3.7 or 3.9 GHz, uh, we are seeing diminishing returns. So the average frame rate is about the same since it's already GPU bottlenecked, but the 1% lows are still rising. So with 3.9 gigahertz, we get 86 1% lows. And with the stock clock at 3.2 gigahertz, we only get 76. Now I've looked at all my benchmark footage and I've found really no situation where all the cores are at 100%. So I was curious to see now if we turn off two cores and four threads and turning up the boost clock to 3.7 gigahertz, we are basically simulating the R7 1600X, which is coming in the next quarter. And you can see that it doesn't make a big difference. So I really think that in the Ryzen lineup, the um, six core 12 thread uh, variants will be the sweet spot for gamers. Moving on to four cores and eight threads, you're starting to see the difference. The good news is that compared to the 3570K, the 1% lows are still significantly higher, which makes it a more consistent and smoother gaming experience. If we compare the different Ryzen variants clock to clock, it doesn't look like a big difference, but it, again, we are GPU bottlenecked, so if you are playing at a lower resolution or you've got a better graphics card than the RX 480, you will see a bigger difference. This last slide is from Firestrike, the physics score. And the reason why I wanted to include this is that the next to last uh, CPU I had was the 2500K, uh, which I kept for five years. And I think many gamers are like that, that they don't upgrade their CPU often. So I think the Firestrike physics score could be a good indicator how performance um, 
could look like in five years. Since Battlefield 1 is the only game I play right now, and there are little things um, that I couldn't do before uh, with my i5 3570K, like keeping the web browser with like 50 tabs opened in the background while playing, um, because now I've got so many cars, so I don't need to worry about the CPU usage anymore. I can definitely say that for me, the upgrade was worth it. Now, if you're only a gamer, um, I definitely wait for the 6 core 12 thread variants. Last but not least, a quick remark about the AM4 motherboards. I was really surprised to see that my cheap Tomahawk mainboard was able to get a 3.9 GHz overclock at 1.35 volts. So if the only thing you care about is overclocking, you don't really need to spend that much money on your mainboard.